I had been keeping from my mum that I wanted to be Muslim. I didn't tell anyone in the family. I kept it to myself, you know, because I knew it just wasn't going to be a good reaction. You know, like I didn't even know how I was going to eventually tell her. <sighs> so I'm learning about Islam like, totally in secret, and then I become Muslim in secret for like six months. But it was like a, it was very soon after I took my shahad or thereabouts. I forget which day it was exactly. Um, I must have been reading the Quran late at night, and I, instead of putting it like out of the way on top of the shelf, I just left it on my desk, thinking nothing of it. And the next morning, like eight, eight thirty nine a.m., Saturday morning, wherever it was, I wake up to my mother screaming at me, like just like a banshee screaming the house down. And I'm like, what's going on? I thought it was a fire or something, or you know, some car crash. I don't know outside. And mum, I see mum screaming at me. She's looking at me. And I'm like, what's going on? And then she runs out of the room and I'm like, what's going on? Look around the room. There's the crown on my desk in plain sight. <sighs> Quickly get dressed. I'm chasing after mum around the house. You know, it's honestly. She's running from the kitchen to the front room, to the passage, back to the kitchen. I'm, I'm trying, it's like something of a cartoon, I'm trying to circle around the house. She's throwing stuff at me, throwing pillows at me, clothing. I eventually cornered her in the kitchen, grabbed her, and we sort of collapsed the floor. We were there crying on the floor together. And we were crying for a few minutes, and she, she just kept saying, no, 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 no. And I kept saying, yes, I want to. I want to. I think it was after. I okay. genuinely think it was after. It was a really close period, I, but I do think it was after the Shahada. Okay. And, and she gets up and she just sort of runs out of the, out of the kitchen. And I'm stunned. I didn't know what to do, so I sort of went upstairs. And I thought, okay, if, just get out of the situation for a minute. She comes upstairs. No, you're not. No, you're not doing it. You're not becoming like them. People hate you. Why are you turning your back on us? Who's done this to you? You know, she like, that's one of the first things she said to me. Who's done this to you? I was like, nobody's done this to me. I've did it. I've looked into this myself. No one's converted me. No one's brainwashed me. No one's sending me to Syria. None of that. I've read the Quran and it speaks to me, and I know it to be the truth. And she's like, no, not in this house. Not my son. And I start talking to her like, I'm a, I'm a grown man, you know. I'm an adult, it's my life, you know. i got to do this for myself. And she goes away. And a couple of hours later, we start speaking again. She's like, I can't stop you. I don't approve of it, but I can't stop you. It's your life, and you have to do and live as you want. You'll always be my son. I don't approve of this, but you'll always be my son. But she then goes to me, you have to wait six months, probably hoping I'd fall off the idea, you know. Obviously that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I believe I was a Muslim at that point. It was really close to the black number date. Yeah, I took my shahada. I was already Muslim for six months and I felt so much guilt. Honestly. About living a double life of like, oh, I'm going to go see a friend. I'm going to the mosque. You know? Oh, I'm going to go McDonald's or something. I'll be back later. I might see a friend. I'm at the new Muslim meetings in Cardiff for a couple months. Eventually the six months expires, and it was um, January of 2020, and I go to it and I was like, six months is up, I still, still want to do it. And she goes, okay, you're your own man, you got to live how you want. Let's just do it to get it over with, because you're breaking my heart. Okay. So um, she made me take my brother-in-law to Dar ul Isra Mosque, and I arranged for... Uh, a couple of the brothers to take a shahada with me again in front of my brother-in-law. We go and do that and I'd be Muslim ever since, really. Everyone was a bit shocked because I remember I told everyone at a family party. I finally plucked up the courage to tell everyone I was Muslim at this time. Because I, I, it was at the family, it was an engagement, I think. And I'm not drinking, you know, because everyone's around the tables drinking, oh, you know, have a beer, you know. 
do you want a drink? Do you want a glass of wine? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm fine, I'm fine. Have, this, have some food. I was like, no, I'm fine. Because none of it was halal and none, none of it was like vegetarian either, you know. So I'm like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'll just have a can of Coke. Anyway, I eventually pluck up the courage and I go around seat to seat to seat. I'm like, I tell my sister I want to become Muslim. Okay, fair enough. I didn't expect you to say that. I'm like, okay, that wasn't the right action. I wanted. So I then I go to the next sibling. It's my brother. Think about becoming Muslim. Yeah, we would. You do you, whatever you want. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And I start going around all the family members, and they're like, yeah, if you ask the way you want to live, that's fine. You know, you got to live how you want. You know, just be a nice person. You know, don't turn hardcore and just say we're like disbelievers every day, every time you see us, and we're going to hellfires. You, know, you, say, you say that to us as soon as we wake up. You know, obviously I was never going to do that. But honestly, the, apart from mum, who initially didn't take it well, all my family's been fine with it, you know, everyone. It's quite funny, like, I'm still living at home, like, <laughs> she bought me a thobe for Christmas and some prayer beads, Tesbeer, yeah, and um, uh, some stuff like that, and we had a halal turkey for Christmas dinner. <laughs> So I can, you know, I can join in and make sure I... She's like, I want to make sure you're eating. You know, she's like, Where can, in Kefili, can I get anything? I'm like, no, I have to go get it from Cardiff, you know. You know, all the halal food, stuff like that, and meat. I think it's been just slowly, slowly over time, seeing me just asking me questions about, like, what's this and that? Like, not that she wants to become Muslim herself, but I think she's just trying to figure out what it is and why I've done it. Like, what was the appeal? And sort of, like... Holy slope, slowly, slowly, I'm bringing down the barriers and the misconceptions. Because like she's actually been looking into like well, this is what Muslims do themselves. Not, like I said, not that she would convert herself. Well, I like guides, mm. who he was. But I do think it has been beneficial for the family because I got siblings asking me questions, trying to clarify some issues. And if I haven't got a question, I'll ask a brother who, who knows or find an authentic source for this sort of question. And I, well, inshallah, I hope I've at least in my family, have demystified Islam and showed its beauty, mm. you know? When she says the truth, I read the Quran, it appealed to me, it makes sense, the way of life, like there's no drinking, you know, it's a simple way of life, there's no, what we would call haram, and there's, none of that has a chance to happen because of the way the Quran and the Sunnah is set out in Islam.